Um, welcome to the last Tech Tip Live of the year. Um, as always, if there's any questions that come up, we're not really going to go over any specific technical topic. We're kind of doing the year end like we did last year. But any questions, feel free to uh, hit the chat window. Um, if the questions are really, really good, we might have to answer them offline. Uh, this will be recorded and always welcome your feedback and suggestions for future tech tips topics. Ooh, that's a tongue twister. So thanks again for joining. I am Jen Micklick, a technical project manager at Hertzler, and my wonderful panelist guests are Byron Shetler, wave as I, I'm sure everybody knows you, yeah. Hey. Our CEO and head alpha geek, I love that, so I have to say that. Uh, Phil Mason, our VP of Business Development, Jacob Shetler, wave for it, thank you, our Cloud Development Manager, and last but not least, Charles Min, one of our data scientists. Thank you guys for joining today. The agenda here, as you see, just going to do some highlights from 2022. Oh, what a year it's been. Uh, crazy busy, like solid crazy busy. So I know you guys have done some some really cool things this year. I'm um, excited to hear about some of them. Also, we got some uh, different tech tips format for 2023. And then um, talk about GS Essential and GS Premier. What is that? You'll find out. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'd like to start off with a question for Charles and Byron. Um, and, and I'm asking Byron, too, because Byron, we were so busy this year. He's actually gone out on several projects um, with our technicians and as a technician. So I appreciate you taking one uh, for the team there. But uh, tell us about a project. Um, that you guys worked on this year? That's like a memorable one. Uh, Charles, we'll go ahead and, and put you first. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, given how busy the year was, it's really kind of hard to <clears throat> zero in on just one. Um, but I will say that um, this year, given how things have been over the last couple of years, it really was refreshing for me to be able to um, do a lot more what I'd like to term hybrid approach uh, projects where some of it was on site and some of it was remote. <clears throat> and for some of these longer projects that I've worked on, and by longer projects, I'm talking you know, 10 plus days, um, being able to meet the players in person um, and yet also be working off, you know, not with them directly, um, but at home um, is actually kind of nice. Um, I will say one of the more interesting projects that I've worked on, um, worked with a group out in California who um, a lot of what they do is um, mostly reselling units. So some of their data isn't, traditional manufacturing SPC data. Um, but what they really do want to see is a different, it's just a different way to calculate what they are capturing. Um, and, and he's a really good guy to work with. I've enjoyed, I enjoy working with him. Um, really keeps me on my toes because I never know what he's going to ask me next. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate that. Byron? Yeah, I had fun uh, getting out of the office. They let me out of my cave this year so I could get out and see some customers. It's always great to get out and um, see the software in use. Gives me a lot of uh, enhancement ideas for future improvements as, as I work with the system and say, oh, this this should be easier or we could, we could do this a better way, that sort of thing. Uh, a couple that come to mind, um, when I worked with a company and we're tracking all their PLC settings. Um, and with that, they can see how their recipes might differ from winter to summer and 
looking at different products, what kind of different settings they might run at, and then compare uh, those to previous settings. And then long term, they're going to correlate their set PLC settings with their product parameters. So these aren't necessarily values coming out of the PLCs. It's what what are they set at to you know for a run speed and temperature pressure that sort of thing. So that was kind of a, a fun one to work on. Um, some some other OPC that we did um, this year, we started to dabble with a couple companies into the OPC UA, which is a newer, well, it's probably 10 years old, but you know how things can go in the manufacturing world. If something works, you don't mess with it. So a lot of OPC is OPC DA, what's called DA, and um, UA is kind of the newer technology, although like I said, it's probably at least 10 years old, but I'm starting to see some customers moving towards UA in, instead of DA. Um, you know, we do the ERP and QMS interfaces. One one interesting one uh, worked with uh, an MES called Ignition, where we're tracking machine downtime and uptime through the ignition system and then displaying that information on dashboard and then pulling traceability that the operators are entering in ignition into an inspection. So basically they pick their machine and it fills in all their traceability values for them. What job they're running, parts are running, all that, and it, it makes life really simple. And they're, they're not having to enter that same information twice. So they they really appreciate that. Um, I think another one we worked with was uh, our starting to work with is Specrite. It's like a specification repository to be able to interface to that. And, you know, one thing that I was really focused on this year as we bring the cloud product online um, is trying to look at how are we interfacing to these various systems and not just doing one-off interfaces, but creating, uh, you know, maybe a Python script and throwing it in our library so that we can reuse and, and rebundle that. And then how do we do these interfaces going forward with the cloud, with some technology we're going to call connectors, which basically, you know, you, you grab a connector and then you talk to your ERP or QMS, MES, whatever three letter acronym you want to choose there. Um, so I think those were kind of the highlights for me for the year. Awesome. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, I'll move over and you guys are like like the tech side and then and then the other side. So uh, we'll go to the other side here, Jacob and Phil. What are some trends that you are seeing related to uh, technology and manufacturing? Uh, Phil, we'll go ahead and pick you first. Okay, sure. Well, Charles already mentioned it uh, in in the hybrid world or used hybrid, and he was talking about hybrid work, but also for Charles and for us, it's hybrid applications of computing technology. And we really see you know, we have some people, it's like, well, is everything going to the cloud? Is every, you know, I don't trust the cloud. I want to keep it local. Uh, maybe I'm someplace in the middle. Uh, my server's up for, uh, the hardware's up for renewal. Do I really want to spend that 15000 Or I can just buy some AWS or, or Azure space for, you know, a thousand bucks a month. So that is a trend that we're really seeing. And the the big picture and what we're talking about and thinking about and Byron convoluted to it as well is, you know, the future is hybrid. And that means that there are, we all have more tools in the toolbox and we're going to be looking at how with each client, each of our partners, we can kind of create that toolbox or for them that special application that works best for them. And maybe it is local. Maybe they really have those resources and they want to do that. Uh, maybe it's that next step of hybrid, just a, a simple lift and shift of even lifting their SQL database up to the cloud and operating locally, having that database in the cloud. Or maybe they're moving the app up there. And then even that whole next step and, and where we're moving with cloud applications where everything is hosted and you know we are running that back end and our partners are uh, using a browser-based product. So that's kind of that whole other spectrum uh, in the other place. And I guess I will add, we, we do have another hosted solution 
for people's app, for the Gain Seeker app, uh, if they want to do that too. And that's something we've gotten a couple clients started on this year as well. Smaller clients who maybe don't want to put the resources into having some of that local ma management. So we're seeing a lot of hybrid and that is probably going to be there. There is not going to be a perfect answer uh, going forward. And so that that is kind of part of the important planning that we do with clients. Thank you. Yeah, and we just keep seeing more and more of that in in just about every possible scenario there is. It's, it's definitely coming. Um, thank you for that, Jacob. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things I'm seeing is an increased adoption of cloud technology and software. So a few years ago, uh, we consistently heard from analysts and from our CAD, from our industry that uh, people were not ready to move to the cloud. They were going to stay on on-prem for a very long time. And now, just uh, two years later, three years later, uh, a lot of our clients are using a multitude of cloud services. Uh, and like Phil was saying, those are being used alongside their on-prem systems. So our clients are really in a flux state right now where they're moving between uh, systems that are typically been on-prem, moving some of them to the cloud, keeping some of them on-prem. And so it's a really important that our software is able to connect to all these different systems that people are already using. Uh, we use a lot of APIs to connect to that, like Byron was saying, we also use OPC. Uh, and so an easy exchange of information between these systems and between gain seekers is really important for us, and I think provides a lot of value to our clients. One other thing that I'm seeing is a reduction of in-house uh, IT staffing. Yeah. So uh, our clients are extremely busy. And, uh, you know, in the last couple of years, uh, they really have uh, come to a lack of in-house IT to support them using Gainseeker or other applications. IT is also being centralized or uh, being outsourced. So with our new uh, hosted offering that Phil was talking about, uh, where we lift and shift desktop gain seeker onto a cloud server, or uh, with our upcoming cloud product that's gonna be released next month, we can take some of that burden off of our clients. Awesome, thank you so much, getting me excited. Uh, um, another question for Charles and Byron. Uh, Tell us how you guys have leveraged one of our newer features in Gainseeker with one of our clients. It doesn't have to be in 9.5, but you know something within 9.1. Um, <clears throat> 9.3 was the, and 9.3 is now a couple of years old, but um, 9.3 was the first version where we supported um, languages other than English in the software. And I'm actually quite happy to say that uh, one of my first projects after 9.3 went live was to help get um, <clears throat> a facility out in Mexico onto uh, Gainseeker for the first time. Uh, but because we were waiting on the release of 9.3, <clears throat> Yeah, that was big for them. So that way I could have essentially on the fly translations of what is done in English uh, into Spanish for them to re be able to read and understand and be able to put in the right information. Um, since night, you know, at that time it was only for PC Collect, uh, but now that that um, functionality has been expanded to Gain Seeker charts. Um, I do see a lot more of our Latin customers um, taking advantage of that and being able to understand, uh, you know, what they're looking for, what they're using, um, how how important uh, understanding the the product actually is, um, and and for their, especially for their um, comfort in the in the program. Um, being able to, for them to, for them being able to understand it all has been a huge boon. Awesome, and and the way that you can actually do that by user, and just say uh, English, Spanish, 
you know, French. Um, it is also uh, very easy for them to manage. So yeah, that's a, that's a great one. Byron, do you have one? Yeah, I think um, some of the Python tools for, for me are the are the big wins. Uh, being able to archive your your scripts and set up. Um, uh, a file compare tool like WinMerge or something like that. I mean, basically you can use whichever tool you want to use. You can configure the system to use that, but then you can look at your current script and go back and look at archived versions of that to see what might have changed um, over over time. And then using folder structure within the scripts as well to be able to set up um, some categorization or to arrange those a little more rather than just an alphabetical list. Those are a couple of big ones. Uh, one that I keep seeing people discover, uh, they're they're still discovering the data canvas, you know, which has been in there a number of versions, but people's eyes kind of pop when they see that because it gives them uh, a visual that they can present for their operators so they can, you know, slap a, some numeric inputs or pass fails right on an image and the operators can click right on the image and enter their data that way. Um, that. That one seems to be um, still being discovered by by uh, different customers, and even though it's been in there for a while, is a, a, re a really useful feature. So those, I think those capture um, for me what would have been the the big ones in the last year or so. Yeah, and and I'm actually surprised the the custom stat which we've had around for a little while. Mm -hmm. I see that constantly getting used in in more unique ways and i know charles did one for the customer he was talking about earlier but uh so i'm glad to see those you know yes yeah, so, pretty popular yeah year, years ago we we kept adding new statistics and new statistics to the system you know there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of statistics in the system and we years ago we said this is crazy for us to keep adding them let's let's let the users define their own statistics and and do that so you've got the full Python uh, language and all the, the objects that we've created as well that we supplement Python. Um, people have access to that and, and they've taken and done crazy things with it that we never expected. Uh, so, you know, they might have a, a statistic which is going out, querying a database, getting costing information, you know, looking at their scrap rates and multiplying it to come up with all sorts of wild and crazy things. And I know Charles and Ian and Chris, others, Chad have have done some custom statistics with customers. It's, it's like, wow, that was that was pretty pretty uh, smart, pretty brilliant move on their part to use a, a custom statistic to to get some information that is useful for the for the end users. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I can. You know, going off of that, I can actually pull up an example of a custom statistic. Um, you know, we're, our dashboard grid is one of the most powerful tools that we have. Um, but one of the downsides of the way our database is structured is that we have SPC data and DMS data in two completely separate tables. And trying to combine that data takes a little bit of work. Um, but by using a custom stat to kind of summarize DMS data and display it as an SPC count or vice versa, really just brings it all together and um, I wouldn't necessarily say simplifies the grid, uh, but at least it doesn't add additional blank cells into the grid that kind of throw off the, the aesthetic of it. Good point. I appreciate that. Um, hey, ever, Jen. Oh, yes. So Byron and Charles, I know Byron, you've talked a little bit about in some of our newer versions, we have now the ability uh, to to retrieve related data. And, and I think that's one that people are using kind of the power of that, which again, and, and Jacob will probably talk about this in the cloud a little bit, this idea of going from sampling and pure SPC to more, more data is always better and, and big data. Uh, we have also, even with on-prem gain seeker, we have advanced with that. And now some of the tools and our ability to retrieve related data, I think is, is really a pretty powerful tool that we've added here recently. I don't know if you want to say any more about that. 
Yeah, whether, whether it's through the custom, what we call custom statistics, where we're going out and querying other systems to kind of supplement the, the gain seeker information, or just pulling in on a dashboard. You can do what we call scripted retrievals on a dashboard, where you can pull in information from your ERP, MES, whatever, other systems. You can pull that in and display it side by side with gain seeker data. So there's a lot of cool things going on in that space in terms of trying to get, you know, move away from islands of data or disconnected data sets to pull pull information in onto one coherent dashboard. Awesome. Well, I'm going to kind of change topics here as we have about 10 minutes or so left um, and talk about what's coming up for next year. And I know everybody wants to know the cloud, but before we could do that, um, I want to talk about Tech Tips Live. So uh, we know this is the last one for the year, but it is actually the last one. We have decided to take the live off of it. We're still going to do Tech Tips as long as I'm around. We got to do Tech Tips, right? But um, we're continually asking and trying to evolve and trying to make things accessible for everybody, you know, and, and do the format that we think is the most efficient. Um, we know that everybody, you know, takes a look if, if they're not here during the meeting, we do post them up and you can view them later. But we really think the, the way to go is by doing two or three or four, you know, few minute videos, five minutes or less. Maybe there's a topic that we'll do a 10 minute and send that as an email have a couple links hey this is how you do this or here's what we did last week here's what we did last month and have shorter clips that you guys have access to you can you know put them in your pocket put them in your tool belt for later um so uh we will be working on getting emails and stuff for that uh announcements will be coming but this is definitely the last live at least for the next year. Who knows? If you guys say you miss us so much, you know, maybe maybe we'll come back. Um, so I wanted to let you guys know that. Um, now, for all the exciting stuff, um, Jacob, I know there's so much you can tell us about the cloud. You already said that it's it's pretty much coming out next month. I'm going to ask you a question so it's not totally all open ended because you could probably speak to it for hours and. I can tell you how excited I am about all the stuff, but I won't. Um, so tell us how the cloud is different from Gainseeker Enterprise and feel free to change up and elaborate. But. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, one of the new things is a uh, much cleaner and more intuitive interface to the product. Uh, we've spent a lot of time uh, working on usability of the software and improving it. And we've heard from our early clients, uh, people that are in the early access program, that it's really easy to use and navigate. Uh, we had one customer say something to the effect of, uh, if you've ever used a web application before, you can use Gainseeker. So that was great to hear. Uh, something else is a lot easier setup of the system. Uh, we also spent a lot of time uh, working on import export with Excel. So you're able to download the standards or uh, processes, users, that sort of information from the system, modify it in Excel and then re-upload it. Uh, and I think that'll save a lot of time for getting people up and running with the system. And what, no scripting for that? No scripting for that. It's all it's all CSVs, so you can do it all in Excel. Awesome. Um, and yeah, and then two things with inspections that are going to be pretty different is uh, we added a lot more flexible inspection layout. And so you can really take complete control of how inspections lay out. You're not allowed to lay out tests next to each other. Uh, on top of each other diagonally, whatever order you want to lay it out. Uh, you can move charts and files away from the right hand side if you'd rather see it on the left or maybe in the center uh, and have tests on either side you can do that the data canvas that uh, byron was talking about earlier 
is also a lot more heavily integrated into inspection. So instead of being over on the like right panel like it is right now, uh, it's actually on the inspection screen. So while the operator is going through their inspection flow, they see the image and the controls are laid over that image. So it, that really improves uh, operator workflow and uh, efficiency. If you have a check sheet and you really, really, really don't want to change uh, the order that you're doing the checks in or even how the check sheet is laid out, uh, you're able to do that pretty easily in the cloud. And then one other thing is uh, contextual traceability. So what I mean by that is users and workstations can now be tagged with traceability values. And then whenever a user uh, enters data from that workstation or no matter what workstation they log in on, if it's assigned to the user, uh, data will automatically be tagged with traceability that applies to that user. So let's say you know that uh, Mike always works shift two. Uh, you can set shift two on Mike's user and all the data he enters will auto automatically be uh, tagged with shift two. So that's a lot less manual entry that operators have to do. Well, that's pretty awesome. I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm getting excited. I've gotten to see it a little bit and there's improvements being made every day. So I I'm st still surprised about it. Um, I also heard that it's pretty easy if you need to change the name. Of a of a part number or character. Yeah. yeah, that's something that's really different from desktop gain seeker is that um, we're now using internal IDs to link entities together. So uh, all the standards that you make, all the processes, defects that you make, uh, you can change the name of them. And because we're not using the name to link anything together, it's all linked by uh, IDs behind the scenes. So yeah, if you have somebody that uh, typos a standard name and you figure out a month later, it's not a big deal to go in and change it. How cool is that? And I know we don't want to get too deep, but for my my techies out there, so with Enterprise, we work with Python for the cloud. Mm -hmm. One, yeah. it sounds like we won't have to be scripting as much because there's so much stuff that's already in there. But if we yeah. have to, can we? Yes, yeah, there is a scripting language uh, because it runs in a browser. It uses JavaScript, which is the language that browsers support. Okay. So, yep, there will still be scripting if you need to customize your inspections beyond what we provide out of the box. And yeah, that'll use JavaScript. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Anybody have last minute comments before I wrap this up? For my team. I pinged our, our guests here, see if we got any questions from them. Andy, Andy jumped in uh, towards the end. We can maybe catch him up another time. Absolutely. Um, we are recording this, so it will be up. Um, and you notice I switched uh, the next bullet point. We invite you to share your feedback and ideas for the future tech tips, not tech tips live, um, at sales at Hertzler.com. And we, like I said before, we'll be building a new email list for our 2023 tech tips. So watch for future information. If you just absolutely right now want to make sure that you're on that list, no matter what, send an email to sales. So send an email to one of us. We will make sure to include you. Um, with that said, I, I think we're done and I want to wish everyone a, a great end of 2022 and happy holidays and a happy new year and hope to be working with you guys soon. Thanks everybody. <laughs>